Now is the time to make a birth plan that actually works so that you get a birth you will love to remember. I'm Annabelle, nurse, birth doula, and mama, and I'm here to build your confidence in birth. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring that bell to stay up to date to my latest content. Here are my five steps that I coach mamas to take to make a great birth plan that actually works. Number one, decide what kind of birth you want from the beginning. Now you might already be so far along in your pregnancy and you're thinking, well, this isn't the beginning. When I say the beginning, I'm talking about before labor starts. As you're creating this birth plan, the first step to take is what kind of birth do I want? You have to do some research here because there are so many things that happen in labor and in birth and you need to know what those things are so that you can say, I want that to happen or I don't want that to happen so that you get that end goal when you're holding your baby in your arms and you look back at your birth and you say, I did it. I did it without any medications if that's what you want. I had a vaginal birth if that's what you're really set on. I got to eat and drink through labor and I got to get out of bed and walk around and be on my birth ball and I got that vaginal med-free birth that I wanted. Or maybe you're okay with having medications and you're okay with having a C-section. Maybe what you want is a healthy baby and a healthy mom and you can look back and say, I did everything that I could, I made decisions that were good for me and baby and I got a healthy baby at the end of it all. So you really have to sit down and think, what do I want? when I think about other moms that have had different birth experiences and I've heard their stories and maybe that's the kind of birth that I want based on that friend or that mom or that sister. Think about what kind of birth you want. Tip number two, name your birth coach. This person is a part of your whole experience from creating a birth plan, starting labor, birthing your baby and celebrating with you. This person helps you sift through all of the information and make decisions to write down on your birth plan. They're there to support you emotionally, physically, and spiritually as you're in labor and you give birth. And I love to see the birth coach support and celebrate with mom after baby is born. Think about some people in your life that you might want to ask to be your birth coach. Maybe it's your husband. Maybe you want to hire a birth doula. Maybe it's a mom or a sister. There's pros and cons to each person you might think about. So make a list of those pros and cons and try to match who really would suit you best. And ask that person, can you maybe overcome some of these obstacles? If it's your husband and he feels a little bit ill-equipped, get in a childbirth class. Check out some stuff online. I love to coach moms and dads so that they can really be strong in labor together and dad can be a great birth coach. Step number three, write your birth plan. This is the fun part, but it is so easy to have way too many things on your birth plan. And I'm gonna help you really slim down your birth plan so that it is attainable, so that you get what you want in birth. You have to keep your end goal in mind the entire time you write out different things that you want to happen in birth. Ask yourself two questions each time you write out something on your birth plan. Will this thing help? or hinder my end goal. If you want a vaginal med-free birth, will this one thing help me get that or will it hinder me from getting that? And then also ask yourself, is this thing important enough to push through the resistance? Say that you labor at home for several hours and then you get to the hospital and you have on your birth plan no IV Pitocin. And then your labor starts slowing down as you're at the hospital Maybe your cervix is not opening as fast as the nurse or doctor want it to. And the doctor or nurse come in, comes in and says, let's start some IV Pitocin to help those contractions just keep on going, make sure that your cervix opens up and we get the show on the road. There's gonna be some resistance there because you have on your birth plan no IV Pitocin. You wanna go as natural as possible, no medications, but your nurse and doctor really think that it's going to help you. You're exhausted. You just want this baby here. Are you going to be willing to push through that exhaustion and the resistance of your nurse and doctor? If you say, no, I am not going to have IV Pitocin, it's on my birth plan, that is some resistance and you're gonna be strong through that. And when you're writing your birth plan, you say, yes, I'm gonna be strong, I don't want that. If you say, okay, yep, go ahead and start the Pitocin, I want this baby to come, 
let's get the show on the road. And then after your baby's born, you're holding your baby. Are you going to look back and say, man, I just really wish I would not have said okay. Or will you look back and say, you know, it was on my birth plan, but it's okay. It really helped my baby get here. You might ask, okay, should I create my birth plan just from scratch, create it all by myself, or should I get a template? Some moms really like to use templates and I'm not against them at all. I even used a template when I was creating my birth plan for both of my babies. I love it as a reference, but I will say that it is easy to begin checking everything off of it because it sounds good. Okay, no gown, yep, I'm gonna eat and drink, no IV, don't strip my membranes, and you just check everything. And you're just completely in this mindset of, yeah, this all sounds great, I want it all. But again, you have to remember that Will this help or hinder? And am I willing to push through the resistance? So before you even use a template, pull out a blank piece of paper and start writing out everything that you want in your birth experience. Think about your research, think about your end goal and start writing everything down. No gown, gown, eat and drink, don't eat and drink, IV, no IV, etc. Everything that you think, yes, this is part of my birth experience. I want this. I don't want this. And it really helps me get my end goal. After you've written it all down, go back and read it over. Think about those big things that stand out to you. Things that you think will really help you get your birth goal and start to ask yourself, is it simple? Is it easy to remember so that if I can't find it while I'm in labor, I can just say to the nurse, no, that was not on my birth plan, or yes, that's on my birth plan. Is it in an order of importance so that when you pull it out at the hospital and you give it to the nurse, and she doesn't have a lot of time, but she might read the first or second points, those first two, three points are really what matter to you, and she read them, she saw them, and she knows. I also recommend having two different lists. One list is your birth plan list of things that you and your birth coach will do at home and at the hospital. Things like getting up and moving around, walking, bouncing on your birth ball, making sure that you're hydrated, making sure that you're getting rest, things that you can control. And then the second list, making sure that it's simple and it's in an order of importance is a list that you will give to your healthcare team at the hospital. They don't necessarily need to know that you're getting out of bed, that you're walking around. They're all for that, but they need to know if you're going to have an epidural or not. They need to know if you're going to have an IV or not. They need to know these very important things, things that they are really a part of. So writing your birth plan, it can seem very tedious, it can seem complicated, but it also can be very exciting. So I want to encourage you to keep a healthy mindset, keep your birth statement in mind, that end goal, that rock and foundation of why you're doing all of this. Because when you get into labor and you have all of these points, these things that really seem to matter when you were writing your birth plan, and then you're in labor and they don't really seem to matter anymore because you're exhausted, you're just trying to get to the point where your baby's in your arms. And so like I said, keep it simple, make sure that you can say it, you can memorize it, but really that your end goal's in mind with every point that you put on your birth plan. Step number four, tell the world about your birth plan. You've taken these steps so far, you have a beautiful birth plan, you know what kind of birth experience you want. Don't fold that birth plan in half and put it in your hospital bag for it to be pulled out the day that labor starts. Make sure that you're out telling your friends, your mom, your sister, everybody that you know and that you're excited to tell, this is my birth plan, this is what my birth experience is gonna be like. You're gonna have a lot of resistance, people that say, well, just be open to it changing, and I totally agree. There are definitely things that can change about your birth plan, but your end goal, that birth statement, that vaginal med-free birth, that birth where you have an epidural and you have your friends around you and you feel encouraged and you really just take in the experience, whatever your birth goal is, that beautiful birth experience, tell the world what you are excited about and what you are really creating a foundation for in your mind so that when labor starts, you are ready for it. You don't have to pull out that birth plan and remember, oh yeah, I was gonna get on my birth ball. Oh yeah, I was gonna walk. Oh yeah, I was gonna create a playlist of music. When you talk about your birth plan, it really, remem it really helps you remember to do all of the things that you needed to do to get ready for birth. So tell the world about your birth plan. A lot of mamas ask, 
okay, if I'm supposed to talk about my birth plan, how do I talk to my healthcare provider about my birth plan? I feel a little bit like she or he would be against it. What do I say? I will say when you go in to talk to your healthcare provider, talk to that provider with confidence and humility. Be confident because you've done your research and it is your body and your baby and you have the right to your birth plan. But talk to them with humility because this is what they do for a living, they have the experience, and they do have your best interest in mind. They want a healthy mom and they want a healthy baby. So be humble about your plan and be willing to take in consideration what they say and maybe some things need to change on your birth plan or really talk about those things with them and why you believe one thing, why they believe another, and try to come to somewhat of a compromise to make sure that when you go into labor and they come into the room, they don't have, okay, I know she had a birth plan, but we're not gonna do that. And you don't have this idea of, I have a birth plan and I am afraid they're not gonna do it. You really come to a compromise. You say, this is good, okay, I could do that. Could I do this instead of that? Have a conversation about it, be confident and be humble. Step number five, practice your birth plan. How do I practice my birth plan? I'm not in labor yet, I'm not giving birth yet. Well, you have a beautiful birth plan and I want you to take some of those things out of your birth plan to start practicing. Healthy body habits like stretching, walking on your birth ball, meditation so that you have your mind in a healthy place and you are ready for whatever comes at you breathing so that you can effectively breathe through each stage of labor and into pushing. Make sure that you are saying what your birth statement is, that end goal that you want a vaginal med-free birth, that you want a birth with your family around you where you feel supported and healthy. Whatever your birth statement is, that foundation, say it to yourself memorize it and say it. And also just practice memorizing your birth plan. I know there's gonna be quite a few points on it, even if you do keep it simple and to one page, but make sure that you really know what's on it so that if you can't find the piece of paper or you can't find it on your phone when your nurse is standing right there, you can say, these are the things that are super important to me. Make sure that this happens or does not happen. So those are my five steps when I help mamas create a birth plan that actually works. I hope it was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments for me, let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next video.